Joining us now, she was a two-time All-American while as a player at Oregon, made three Women's College World Series appearances. Most recently was the head coach at Biola, playing them to the national championship runner-up in Division II. Now she's back at her alma mater at Oregon as an assistant coach. We're speaking to Nikki Reagan, joining us here on In the Circle. Coach, how you doing? Good. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. It's been a busy off season for you. Uh, great run at Biola there with a national championship runner up. You come back to Oregon, you get married. It's been pretty busy for you. Yes, it has. All good things, though. Definitely a busy season in our lives, but we're enjoying it and trying to make the most of it. Let's talk about what made you decide to come back to our, your alma mater as, as an assistant coach. Uh, was it just one of those things? I just it's too too good to pass up. Were you looking to kind of look around maybe for coach, head coaching jobs in the D1 level, or is it just one of those things that just worked out? How did it take us through the process? Yeah, for sure. Now, you know, I love my time at Biola, and I um, love that university, respect that university, and also respect my girls um, and cherish my time there. Um, I feel like that school and those girls developed me into who I am today, and so I will be forever grateful for that. So I was in no way searching for another coaching opportunity. Um, But like you said, it's been a crazy few months and my husband and I both graduated from the University of Oregon. And so when this position um, came up, uh, we talked about it and we just both felt in our hearts like it wasn't something that we could both pass up. Um, He's originally from Oregon. So it's nice for him to be closer to his family as well as us just both come back to the community that we both love. And so I'm fortunate to um, have played under Coach Lombardi when I was on the USA team. Um, And so that relationship was formulated during the year that we went, during the summer, excuse me, that we went to Japan. And so just getting to learn under her for that short amount of time um, is really what sparked my interest in um, this position and coming back to my alma mater and also playing um, for a coach um, interested me in coaching with her and serving alongside her. So um, those are a few reasons why my husband and I decided that this, you know, this opportunity might not ever come up again. And so we were going to jump on it. That's big. Wait, I didn't, I forgot about the connection you had with coach Lombardi from team USA. How big did that play a role here as you got to talk to her and have this opportunity to join her staff? Yeah. Um, so throughout the years, there's been ups and downs, as you know, with the program. And I feel like I, I tried my best to make sure that coach felt supported um, from us alumni and made sure that the university and um, Coach Lombardi knew um, that she was supported as she transitioned, um, you know, from Coach White and then uh, Coach Lombardi taking over the program. And so um, throughout the years, we kept in contact after after Team USA and just however I could support her anyway. Or, and um, so it was that relationship was already formulated throughout those years. And then, you know, two, three years later, um, coach asked if I would be willing to come and serve and coach alongside her. How's the transition been? Obviously, with Coach Lombardi and Coach Sam Martyrs also new to the program. Uh, and there's a lot, a lot of Oregon family, by the way, in this staff here. I mean, your mm-hmm. husband, for those who don't know, your husband was a linebacker, great linebacker at Oregon, played for the national championship in 2014 under Mark Helfage. Uh, and then obviously, Sam Martyr, her brother's an assistant coach on the baseball team as well. So there's a lot of duck color, of pride, and blood in here. Right. Yeah. We bleed the green and yellow. Um, definitely. It's been really nice getting to know the martyr family. I think Jack and, um, coach martyr definitely bring a lot of spice and a lot of energy to our staff here, um, in the athletic department. And we're just super grateful for the relationships we've been able to formulate over the last you know month or so. I feel like I've known them for a very, very long time and it just kind of come natural to us. Um, I think the reason that we chose Oregon in the first place was because of our student athlete experience and the community that we developed while we were here. And so um, having that community as a, as a coach now has been huge for myself, my family, um, for Coach Martyr, for Coach Lombardi. It's just a really cool family dynamic here that Oregon softball tries to implement. And I think that the athletic department does really well. So it's been really nice to come back um, as a coach and, and be on staff and experience Eugene and the athletic department in a different way now. What was, the, what was it like that first time you stepped onto the field back at the Jane as a coach uh, wearing those Oregon colors? Uh, I, I surreal, you know, I think it feels like when you finally find out that you're going to the world series, it's kind of like, you just can't believe it. Um, I, you know, it's taken us a while to kind of process that we 
it's, we're living here now, like this is our, our life now. And, um, I'm enjoying every, every bit of it, but I just think like getting the opportunity to coach and to make sure that our players, our student athletes, our girls get the same experience, um, that I did, which was a very positive one. Uh, Biola has since promoted Kristen Halty, who's obviously an alum at Biola there. That had to also make you feel happy too, that it's going to stay within the family there. And it's somebody, you know, very well, uh, what do you think of that move and how she'll do there? Uh, take it over. Yeah, absolutely. I think Biola made a tremendous, tremendous move in hiring, um, Kristen Halty. I have worked under, uh, Chris, like for like looked at her under her as a mentor for many years now, even though I served above her as the head coach, um, I looked to her as a mentor in many ways. Um, and I think she's going to do a fantastic job there. Um, Kristen is so, so smart in the softball world. Um, and I think she will bring a tremendous amount of knowledge to these girls regarding pitching the game of softball. Um, and I just think this was a huge step for Chris in her career and what she wants for her and her family. Um, and I just think she, you know, just like I bleed green and yellow, she bleeds, um, she bleeds Viola and the Eagles. And so I'm excited to see just the passion that's displayed in her um, head coaching career. Um, and I, I don't think I could have felt more peace in my heart passing the program off um, to anyone better. So I'm excited for Chris. And I know the first year is super hard for everybody, no matter what coach you talk to. Um, so I would just say that, you know, Chris just has to continue to trust in the process and, and watch the fruit pay off as she develops these athletes in this program to, to what she wants the program to be. As you look back at your three seasons, what do you think about as you reflect, especially this past year, where you had such a magical year to get to the World Series and get within a game of winning the national title in Division Two? What, what, when you think of that time, what do you think? Well, you know, Eric, I think of a young probably one of the youngest um, head softball coaches in NCAA, uh, not expecting to coach and getting the opportunity to coach uh, and just trying to do her best to lead these girls closer to God. Viola is a Christian school and that was our goal. Um, and he took us to the national championship game to say that it was all me doing it. I would be lying to you. And I would be, you know, um, discrediting the hard work the girls put in and discrediting what my staff has done for me and to support me. So all the credit to them, the hard work that they put in and just buying into um, what I was sharing. I think that's what makes good teams great is the buy in that they have for their coaches and that they truly believe in the mission and um, what they're trying to do. And fortunately, you know, the girls bought in, they didn't look back, they wanted it and they worked hard for it. And we were blessed with the opportunity to play in the national championship game with just three years and a first ever uh, regional championship, which was huge for that program and for the university. And doing all that in a tough region too, to get out of a very difficult region out in the West Coast there, the you know, the league. Was coaching something you all you wanted to do? Is it just kind of happen? What what how did what got you in the direction of coaching? Because you know, you were one of the great, you're one of the greatest players in Oregon softball history. You're still, I mean, you could probably still play if you wanted to. What was it that got you in the direction of coaching? Yeah, you know, after I graduated from the University of Oregon, I was in a graduate program for special education. I wanted to go into early intervention and uh, then potentially speak pathology. Um, and I just, life led me in a different direction. I got a call to come back home um, and coach at Biola as an assistant coach under the former head coach, Lori Coleman, who was there before me. And I just couldn't pass it up. I wanted to be closer to home, closer to my family. And there was nothing really keeping me in Eugene besides that program. Um, and then somewhere down the line, we talked about maybe me pursuing my master's there. And so I decided to just take a leap of faith and go back home and, and try out coaching. And um, I haven't looked back ever since. So it's kind of not really my plans for what I wanted to do, but I feel like I found my calling and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Your, your staff was named your region coach of the year. I mean, you're high accolades. Uh, I mean, so it's such a quick pace as a coach. Uh, what has that been like to kind of, Moving up, as you've you've seen the sport around, it's not it's not as easy to move up, and you here you are up at a Division One level. How do you think the experience you've had in coaching will help you now this next step here back at Oregon? Yeah, I think you know I've just been humbled and blessed to be at the Division Two level, where you know their motto is the balance, life in the balance, right, for the student athlete, and then also for us as the staff. And I feel like. I was able to find a way at that level to be very successful on the field, but also have a balance with my life. And I think that that's something we shouldn't have to um, 
we should look to the division two level at the division one level is finding that balance, maintaining a healthy life, not just, you know, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, all those physically, all those things for our student athletes here at the D one level, as well as the coaching staff. Cause I think a lot of people focus on the mental health of the student athletes, which is fantastic. We need to focus on that, but there's also the mental health side of things for um, our coaching staff. And so I feel like we were able to have a lot of success but I think in order for us to be so successful, we had to recognize we needed to walk away at some points, um, take time for ourselves, our families, and just make sure that we were our best um, in all areas of our lives so that we could pour ourselves out to our girls. And I think that paid off and that you saw the success on the softball field, which was very rewarding for us. The experience of being a head coach, I'm really fascinated how that now will help you here, maybe thinking like, okay, I know what Coach Lombardi might want because this is something I would have wanted if I'm the head coach. How does being that head coach now go from there to being in the assistant help you in this regard, knowing what Coach Lombardi wants and just your experience in coaching in general, having that knowledge of being a head coach? Yeah, I definitely think like our job as assistants is to assist, right, Coach Lombardi to serve under her and alongside her. So being a head coach, I, I think of myself as trying to help coach, not have to explain maybe a few things to me that I should already know um, as previously being a head coach, but also supporting her in the way that she does things as a head coach. Um, I'm excited now that as an assistant, I get to specialize in the defensive side of it. Um, and then also kind of take maybe some areas where coach needs help in and she can delegate those to me. And then I have, um, you know, the experience that I've used as being a head coach and, you know, especially at the division two level, a lot of different hats. Um, so I take that and the responsibility I've had with that and try to help coach and serve coach as best as I can. So you mentioned you're going to run the defense. What are some of the responsibilities you'll have? And, and how is this as a staff? How are, do you, are those divided there? With Sam obviously uh, running the offense, Coach Lombardi obviously running this pitching staff. How does the staff divide in, in, in their roles and, and, and how you all can mesh? Yeah, I think we all carry very different and unique um, responsibilities. Um, I, like I said, will be helping and specializing in the defensive side of things. Um, Coach Smarter specializing in the offensive side of the of the game and then um, Coach Lombardi obviously overseeing all of it and now um, getting to work more closely with the pitchers. I mean, she is known for developing elite, elite pitchers that come out of her bullpen. So um, just the, the the ability for her time to be like specialized with her pitchers um, is huge for her, in my opinion. And then I think her just entrusting uh, me and Coach Martyr to, to, you know, perfect our craft on either side of the ball um, and just make sure that we're, you know, both supported and obviously coach tells us what she likes and dislikes, and then we all work together. And I think, um, we've, we've done a really good job as a staff of, you know, listening to each other. What type of language does coach Smarter want when we're talking offense? What type of language do I want when we're talking defense? Does coach like this type of play that we're running or this type of play? And so I think we've done a really good job getting to know each other and listening to each other. And obviously there's always room to grow and improve, but I think as the season goes on that we really work well um, with each other as a staff and, and we look forward to, to you know, the spring and getting going. Players, how have that transition come as far as you getting to know them and them getting to know you? I don't know if you were able to follow them as an alum while you were at Biola. And if, if you did, could has, has that helped a little bit, the fact that you followed the program already as an alum? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I never – I don't think I missed a game, you know. I mean, we were in season at Biola, but I definitely a diehard alum. Um, watched, you know, try to keep my eyes open during the regional game when it was a super, super late game against Texas. Um, but I just think the girls, um, they're, they're ready to get after it. And I respect the respect that they've given me. Um, they've welcomed me with open arms and I know that they're eager to learn from me just as I'm eager to learn from them. I think I don't want to come in and, um, you know, try to make it all about my experience or what it was like when I was here. I want them to get a good experience and to learn from them just as much as they're learning from me. And so I'm listening at this point too. I'm hearing what they what they've liked, what they've enjoyed, what they could do differently, what they want to do better. Um, and we're really working from that. So I'm excited and I love that I am an alum. And I think that helps me when they run into some, you know, road roadblocks or some road, like some bumps in, in their career. Um, and so I really do utilize that and the relationships that I've formulated here and maybe some people that they're not sure that can help them out. Um, but as far as like 
getting to know the girls. Yes, it is a learning process and a learning curve. And I think um, really as a coaching staff, we try to do our best to get to know them off the field as well so that we can coach them better when they're on the field. Because if we just know them, you know, as a softball player, I don't think we'll be successful coaches, but really getting to understand what makes them the person that they are um, and then how they're motivated and how we can encourage them to be the best that they can be on the field. I know we're, you're just beginning fall, but you've watched a lot of these players play and you've gotten to know them here since you've arrived. Uh, what has stood out, uh, any of the players that kind of stood out to you even before you arrived maybe, that you were kind of like looking forward to working with specifically there, that you're like, wow, that's a pretty talented player. I could really, I could get some stuff done there, both on a, from a defensive standpoint, just seeing them play in person. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I just think of Hannah Delgado in the outfield. Um, she had a great year last year, and um, I like watching her swing from the left side. I thought she has a, a really nice swing, and she was able to make contact and get shoot the ball through the infield um, and step up in some big, big moments. Um, she's been doing a really good job, and I, I also think that I credit Jazz um, Seavers for coming back. Um, you know, she took a year off, and so I'm excited to get back to work with her in the infield. Um, and, and to, to just get after it. So I think there's a lot of great players, you know, we have a really strong infield. I wouldn't be able to, you know, specify all of them, but I think our infield is very strong, um, as well as like our catcher. I know Tara coming back. Um, so we're super excited about that, but really just excited about the, the depth that we have this year. Um, and I think, yeah, I'm, I'm a happy infield I'm a happy defensive coach, if I can say that. Yeah, you've inherited pretty good. Tara McGowan, you talk about a catcher. I know you've added uh, as well Carissa Ornelas from UCF as a transfer, who she's talented as well. What is the key to being a, a good defense? What's the key foundation to being very good on defense? Catch the ball and throw the ball. <laughs> pretty no, simple. really. Yeah, pretty simple. No, I used to have a coach that said that if you can't catch, you can't play. If you can't catch and you can't throw, then you can't play softball. And I know she got that from someone a while back, but um, that was like repeated over and over again. And so um, I just think keeping it simple, communication, but also the fundamentals of catching and throwing um, is, is huge with a good defense. So I would hope that my uh, defense all turn out to be great leaders, um, not just on the field, but off the field, because that's what it takes to be a good defense, always communicating, make sure that we're leading each other in the direction that we want to go. Um, and I just think anticipation, knowing what you're going to do with the ball before it's hit to you, um, understanding the game, understanding that sometimes it is black and white and sometimes it's gray. Softball is not always by the books and you just got to make a split second decision. So teaching our athletes to be comfortable in the decision that they make and just go for it. Also helps when you have talented pitchers too. They get a lot of easy outs for the defense, makes the defense look good, right? And that's the case here as well, obviously with a pitching staff that you've seen grow right before your eyes, even as an alum and, and taking major mm -hmm. steps uh, and, and looking forward to leading this year. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I think having a pitcher that's got the ball in their hands and doesn't want to give it up is a great place to be as a defender. Uh, we have a big pitching staff now, and I think that's awesome for Coach Lombardi and for our defensive side of the game. And our girls are really, really excited. Um, you know, we have a, a lot of versatility in our pitching staff and, you know, we can have people throwing 70 to spinning the ball to more down ball, um, all with very good changeups. And so I think, um, I think we have a lot of work to do. We're excited to get back out on the field. They kind of have that taste in their mouth from the way that their season ended, our elders do. Um, and they're ready to explain what it postseason feels like to these newcomers and to, to, to chase after it and to get us back there. Such a deep staff to complement each other too, uh, which is part of the game now, you know, I mean, you kind of were part of it when you were playing with having a staff and, and a deep staff at Oregon. But this is, I mean, this is the new age of softball here is having this deep staff to kind of keep each other fresh and especially in a league like the Pac-12. Yeah, absolutely. I think day in and day out, you're facing top quality hitters in the Pac-12 and we've got to be ready that it might not be your day um, and somebody else might have them that day. And so I think credit to Coach Zimbardi and the staff before us for recruiting just such um, great pitchers and that we're going to be really set to dominate the Pac-12. And so I think people are going to be maybe um, surprised by the success that we have this year because I think the girls are putting in the work. They're really buying into the system. And I think that they'll be ready to go come the spring. 
Have the players asked you about your playing days? Because I mean, your resume speaks for itself. I mentioned you're the you're the fifth Oregon player ever to be a two time All American or more. You've been to the Women's College World Series, Pac twelve championship. You've done it all. Uh, have they asked about you? Like, what do you, what, do you describe them? What kind of player? Are they? I mean, what what how has that conversation taken place? Um, I think some of them know like what my career was like, um, but definitely when I'm asked, I feel like I can share that. Um, I think it's important that I you know, listen to what they have to say. And then when there's opportunity that comes up to talk about where the program has been, where we want it to go, um, you know, cause we were a successful program when I was here. Um, but we obviously missed something, lacked something that didn't get us there. And so I love to learn from, to, to the championship game is what I mean. Um, and so I love to learn from coach Lombardi, you know, she has won the national championship coach martyr just came from Oklahoma winning a national championship. And so for me, it's like, you know, getting the girls to buy into the system of, okay, we know what it takes because I've won Pac-12 championships, but Coach Martyr and Coach Lombardi know what it takes to win a national championship. And so really just collectively using all of our experiences to relay that message and that, like I said, that buy-in to get the girls to buy in um, for this year and watch those seeds be planted for maybe some of the freshmen to then hopefully when they become upperclassmen and returners, um, that they can continue to to sell that vision to the people coming in after them. The very talented coaching staff too. I would probably take on three on three and any against anybody playing softball or hitting the ball in general, right? I mean, that's a pretty that's a pretty competitive staff there. Is it is it going to get competitive there? I mean, because Sam was pretty competitive at her time, and Coach Lombardi is pretty competitive. Could we see some competition there within there internally there? Um, I don't think so. I think we all, I think we all want to win and we all want Oregon to win. And at the end of the day, that's our intention. I think you add one more great to it. Alyssa Palomino Cardoza is our volunteer coach. I mean, she's one of the best to come um, out of the game. And so I think they're, you know, I'm outnumbered left-handed. They're all seem to be (laughs) left-handed. And I'm like the one right-hander in the coaching staff. So I think that's so funny, but Um, No, we're very competitive. I think a healthy competition is good. Um, Always picking each other up, but always pushing each other to be better. Um, And I just think we're going to work our butts off and we're going to work for each other and for this program to win and for this program to be successful. So I think really good things, but competitive in a good way. We all don't want to lose. So we're going to do our part to make sure that we that we're successful. How is how are you different than you were as a player? How is Nikki Reagan, the coach, different than Nikki Udria, the player? I think as a player, um, I was super, super hard on myself and I um, didn't handle failure as great as I probably could have. And I think now as I've grown and matured, um, not just with the sport, but also as a woman, I feel like I am still hard on myself, but I have great expectations for myself and my players but I understand that life is more than softball. I think sometimes when you're playing at a very high level, you get like very narrow, you have blinders on, you're not able to see from different perspectives. And I think now um, I'm able to see from different perspectives and to see other people the way that they should be treated. I'm able to see the pain or the happiness, the joys of their life that they're experiencing um, and just really kind of slow down. I think as a player, Sometimes I didn't slow down because I was so hyper focused on, you know, being successful or wanting wanting to go to the World Series or wanting to win a Pac-12 championship that sometimes you just want to get the job done. And maybe the the message isn't relayed in the best way. And so I feel like as I've grown and matured, um, I've found a way to really care for people, listen to them, hear their story and then find a way to encourage them to to want the things that I want without trying to push them or in a negative direction. So. What was your favorite memory as a player at Oregon? What, what, I mean, you had so much success, so many great moments. Is there one that stands out above any, any else in your career? Um, I just think the, the, probably the three years we went to the world series, there's nothing like explaining when there's, you know, one out left in everybody. When I, you know, I got the, I was fortunate to be able to play at Howfield and Jane Sanders um, throughout my career. And so There's nothing like explaining when the Duck fans stand up and start to clap or stomp their feet and there's one out left and, you know, somebody pulls it off and figuring out who you're running to, where you're throwing your glove. Um, I think when you're winning, it's, it's really fun and the relationships and the bonds are even that much stronger. And so I would say every year that we went to the world series, that last out of super regionals was probably my favorite, um, 
my favorite because at that point, like the time stood still. It didn't matter if you had problems with the teammate, if you were best friends with the teammate, we had finally accomplished our goal together and we were united as one and those feelings, um, nobody can take away from us. What was it about that group that made it special? You had great players. I mean, I, I mean, every time I was thinking about that team, when I was seeing Gwen Zvek is playing at uh, Athletes Unlimited, still play at a high level. What made that group so special? And what are some of the ingredients that that team has that you hope you, that you could apply and hope to see on this current team? Uh, I think we wanted to win. I think we wanted to find a way and we were going to put in the work and nobody was going to outwork us. Um, I think that if something we could take from that group, it was just the grittiness and that we were going to grind. Um, we were, we were going to find a way, uh, work hard and know that, that we weren't going to stop until the, you know, ball game. I think that was proven in my senior year, uh, when we were down in the seventh inning against Kentucky and we just found a way it wasn't pretty, but it didn't matter. And I think that's something that the university, um, and the program softball program that we learned throughout the years is that when you get into postseason, all that matters is the W. Sometimes it's pretty, sometimes it's ugly, and you just got to find a way. And so I think uh, we had such great athletes, such great athletes, and just I had such great teammates. And I think what happened is we put aside all the stuff that maybe happened throughout the year that gets piled up, and we just knew we had to come together to win. And I think that's what good teams – I think that's what great teams do is they find a way to rise to the occasion, put things behind them and just know this is the, this is the goal. It's bigger than just maybe you and I, it's, it's the team. And so we've got to find a way to win. And I think that's why we were able to do that is that we were able to love each other on the field and stand united as, as ducks and know that we wanted to, we wanted a pack 12 championship. We wanted to go to the world series. And so we were able to accomplish those things. A couple last things you mentioned earlier. They felt that the players, they have a kind of a chip on that shoulder with the way last season had, they felt they could have done more. Uh, what's the keys to accomplishing more? Do you feel that that in a way, you know, taking that step, getting to the NCAA tournament within a win of the Supers, that that inspires motivation there and the hard work? Do you sense that from the, t- the team just being around them again to know them that that's still something they're going to use as motivation? Absolutely. I think last year they had two players on the team that had postseason experience. So now you look at it and, you know, a majority of our girls have postseason experience now. Um, And so I think that's what really motivates them. It's really hard, you know, just not in sports, but just in life in general, when you're putting in all this work and you don't see results. And I think that's sometimes what it feels like being a part of a program that hasn't gone to postseason in a while. And so I think they finally got to postseason and they finally saw their results, their fruit. Um, And then that encourages them to continue to put in the work and continue to grind it out. Um, And so I think they, like you said, they got a taste of it, but it was just regionals, you know, like they want more. And so they're willing to put in the work and we're ready um, as a coaching staff to provide them with the resources um, and to hopefully, you know, take them back um, to the regional so that they know that experience, the upperclassmen, the elders can relay that information to the younger girls so that we can continue this tradition and this legacy and the expectation to get back there every year as the deck program. Last question. Obviously, you pl- you're a student, uh, an alum at Oregon. So you have this knack to relate to the players saying knowing what it's like to be a student athlete at Oregon. What is the key to being a successful student athlete at Oregon, balancing the student the academic side with a, 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 a playing at a, a university that has high athletic achievements, football successful with Mario Cristobal right now, currently doing a great job. Men's basketball has been great. Baseball has now turned it around. They've been, they just got to the postseason last year. What's the key to being a successful student athlete at Oregon and something that you can relay to these girls that, you know, they're going to, they're going to go through similar experiences that you did. Yeah, absolutely. I think utilizing the resources that the University of Oregon has. Um, I don't know if there's another university that has an academic center like we do, the John E. Jacob Center, um, and that facility is tremendous. I think utilizing that for your academics, as well as taking the time, like I said, to care for yourself, to balance out your life. I think a lot of our problems come in when we don't manage our time well, and I think that's um, something I would say uh, is would make our girls successful. Um, if it's a planner, if it's, you know, Google calendar, if it's, you know, just writing things down, some people like to do lists, um, just really try to encourage the girls to um, set aside time to 
make your time management plan because that will make you successful in the end and balance your life. You know, yes, you might have a lot of academics and a lot of athletic, but giving yourself that section time to take me time to take care of yourself. That way you can be the best version of you going into your classes, going into your tutors, going into practice time. Um, and so I would say utilizing those resources we have at the Jaco Center also as well. Um, we have a lot of after, right? Ducks Go Pro, those types of things. Things preparing and equipping our student athletes for life after college, etiquette dinners, all of the above that you could think of, our Jaco Center provides for our student athletes. And I just think that's what set me up to feel successful um, for life after college. And I, and I hope that the girls take advantage of that. Go to all the, all the dinners and all those extra things because they're not just so that people can put them on so no athletes show up. Really, really utilize those types of resources. And I think they'll be happy um, that they did that. Well, uh, we're excited that you're back home. Congratulations on coming back home. Congrats on the success you've had so far. You're an awesome player to watch. I enjoyed watching you play. So I do miss you watching you play for the for the record. But I, I, I'll, I'll, I'm used to getting seeing you now as a coach. So uh, okay, c- c- congrats, coach. Uh, like I said, good luck there at Oregon. And uh, we will appreciate you taking the time. And we'll hope to do this again. Awesome. Thank you. Go Ducks. Appreciate it.